TAPS IS SUCH AN EASILY RECOGNIZABLE CALL, AND VIRTUALLY EVERY AMERICAN WILL KNOW THAT CALL WHEN THEY HEAR IT. THERE IS NO OTHER TUNE THAT EVOKES MORE EMOTION IN PEOPLE THAN TAPS. IT'S TO HONOR THOSE WHO HAVE FALLEN, AND THAT'S WHY WE DO IT. IT BRINGS CLOSURE, AND I THINK THAT'S WHAT TAPS IS INTENDED TO DO. Uh, YOU KNOW, IT WAS PLAYED ORIGINALLY TO BRING CLOSURE TO THE DAY. I CERTAINLY BRING A LEVEL OF SEVERITY OR SERIOUSNESS TO EVERY PERFORMANCE, BECAUSE YOU NEVER KNOW WHAT THAT melody means to somebody. It's precise and held to a high standard because it is the last honor that we can give someone and so it should be done right. It was born here in the United States, originated here at the Berkeley Plantation over 150 years ago. This is ground zero for TAPS. This is where it started. For me, the connection to the Civil War uh, and this engagement that was representative of so much strife within our, our country, um, much of it happening right here in Henrico County. The idea that TAPS itself originated as a result of battles that were fought here, I think brings significance to it, to our own community. Um, and you look at something now that's played all over the world at military ceremonies, uh, and it has its roots right here in Henrico County. Those roots trace back to the last week of June 1862, when Union General George McClellan's Peninsula campaign to take Richmond came to a bloody halt in eastern Henrico. The series of engagements known as the Seven Days Battles left the Union Army with heavy casualties and shaken morale. The retreat to the James River after repeated poundings by Lee's Army of Northern Virginia positioned what remained of McClellan's forces at Berkeley Plantation in neighboring Charles City County. About 100,000 federal troops took up residence at the well-defended post, also known as Harrison's Landing, to regroup after the crushing missteps that had dashed any hopes of a quick end of the war. At Berkeley, the ancestral home of two U.S. presidents, yet another contribution to our nation's history would soon be made. When the troops arrived here, they were in pretty sad shape. They had just been beaten up pretty badly by the Confederate Army. They had just marched five miles in the rain and the humidity was, was quite high. They came into camp here and they met with pretty miserable conditions. It was during that time that a brigade commander by the name of General Daniel Butterfield decided to change the evening call. Up into 1862, the regulation call for lights out was a call that was originated from the French, and it turns out it was Napoleon's favorite bugle call. Now in the evening, the call was to tell the soldiers to put out the lights and go to sleep. And the call sounded like this. And you can tell it's a very martial sounding type of call and it was usually followed by a distinct three drum taps. Soldiers would call it the drum taps and was later shortened to just taps. However, this bugle call was just a little too formal sounding in Butterfield's mind. He really wanted to honor his men and change that bugle call from that very formal sounding lights out to something a little bit more lyrical. So what he decided to do was to revise an older bugle call that had gone out of service prior to the Civil War, take the last part of that call, which was an old tattoo call, and revise it into the 24 notes we know today as taps. And it happened here at the Berkeley Plantation. The first to perform that call was a bugler from the Erie, Pennsylvania area by the name of Oliver Wilcox Norton. He was the brigade bugler, and Butterfield called him into his tent sometime in July and asked him to sound the new call that evening. Norton went out and performed 
the call of taps as we know it today for the first time. The new call of taps was certainly a, a different call altogether, much slower and much more melodic. The next morning, he was approached by other buglers from other brigades. There were many, many brigades set up, and so a bugle call performed by one would be heard by so many other buglers. Well, the next morning after this new call is performed, these buglers approach Norton and say, what was that new call you played last night? It's not familiar. The other buglers actually liked the call and asked for copies of it, which Norton happily uh, provided for them. And pretty soon, other brigades, other buglers were performing this new call of taps. So the call quickly spread throughout this area and then throughout the Union Army. And also by the end of the Civil War, Certainly, some Confederates were also using that call as the final call of the day. While some details of what transpired at Berkeley that summer remain shrouded in the fog of war, Butterfield and Norton's individual accounts were largely verified by one another long after their tours of duty. Still, there is one widespread tale that has persisted for many years, though no corroborating proof has ever been found. There's a popular myth on how taps originated, and it has to do with a Confederate soldier and a Union captain by the name of Ellicom. In this myth, the Union captain heard the moans of a wounded soldier, and he crawled out and pulled back this soldier during the battle, and when he rolled him over, he discovered to his horror that it was his son, who he had thought he had sent off to a music school to avoid the war but here he is in front of him dying. And uh, unfortunately, the young man dies. In his pocket, there are some notes scribbled on a piece of paper. And the captain, in his grief, has the music performed at the son's funeral. And it turns out that those notes are the notes, the taps. And it's a wonderful, moving story. And it reaches out to the fact that the Civil War was not only fought brother against brother, but sometimes father against son. And it really touches the heart. However, the story is a myth. It's, it's a fake story. And in my research, I came across how the myth had actually uh, came about. It turns out that the story came from the mind of a person named Robert Ripley. Ripley was the creator of Ripley's Believe It or Not. Albeit in a less poetically dramatic fashion, Taps was first sounded at a military funeral at roughly the same time and place that the Ellicom legend was purported to have unfolded. The call, informally known as Day is Done, or Butterfield's Lullaby, was played when Captain John Tidball's artillery unit lost a corporal near Harrison's Landing. Rather than the traditional firing of three rifle volleys which could have revealed his location to the rebels and renewed hostilities, the captain ordered the sounding of taps at the funeral instead. Performing the new call for this unlikely purpose ultimately proved fitting and was just one of the many functions carried out by buglers in the Civil War. If you could imagine Berkeley Plantation in 1862 with literally thousands and thousands of Union troops camped here for an entire month, there were no walkie-talkies back during that time. The only way of communications 
well, besides the uh, telegraph, which couldn't have been set up in such a quick uh, fashion, was to be able to use bugles. The bugle was one of the first instruments to be used in the military and is primarily for communication and to call over long distances. And it was very utilitarian initially, and it was out of necessity. There's no way to communicate across the other side of the field. And so the bugle and the drums played a really important role through the history of being able to coordinate large units. So it's an integral part of the military from the very beginning. Buglers have been used in the military since there's been armies. In fact, you can uh, find references to bugle calls and trumpet calls in the Bible. And when the American Civil War started, it was only natural that bugle calls were used not only to tell the time in camp of duties for soldiers, but also helped in directing uh, troops on the battlefield. Bugle calls actually maneuvered how troops were uh, used on the battlefield when they moved forward or moved back or when they began to uh, fire or to cease fire. So bugle calls were certainly important uh, in the military and still are used today in our United States military. At military installations around the world, TAPS is still played for its original purpose of bringing the day to a close, although it's typically heard as a recording broadcast over loudspeakers. For most Americans, the image that TAPS evokes is of Arlington National Cemetery, the epicenter of our nation's remembrance of fallen soldiers. The most visible display of ritual and reverence can be found at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, where a 24-hour vigil has been in place since July 1937. Forward! March! Guards! Halt! When you see it in Arlington, the setting, why it's being played, the importance of it, um, it all sinks in and can be very emotional. For me, the playing of taps is the highest calling that I could perform with my gift of being able to play trumpet. I've toured the world in various ensembles and military units in China, Japan, Europe, and played in great music concert halls throughout the world, and I could think of no greater stage or venue to play my trumpet and no greater melody than, than taps. And the reason why we have such a high standard for taps is you're playing all by yourself. The people that play it in Arlington, for all divisions uh, or all service branches, are truly, truly special and truly, truly gifted. And they have a, a, a unique talent. And it really is awe-inspiring. I mean, it will make you think about why you're there. There have been times I've played at the tomb and felt like there was, you know, maybe just a, a lot of middle school kids and kids who, people who didn't really care about the importance of tats, then turn my head and walk march back to the tomb quarters and see somebody crying. Um, so you never know who's going to be there and what it means to them at any time. So every single time, even though we play it hundreds of times a year, it's really important to bring that level of presence and mindfulness to every performance so that it's special each and every time because you don't know who's listening. 
on a cold fall day just over a century after the birth of Taps. A former member of the U.S. Army Band sounded the call before an audience of unprecedented scale. The most famous rendition of the call Taps came in November of 1963 when Army bugler Keith Clark sounded it for the funeral of President John F. Kennedy, who had been assassinated four days earlier. Our nation is bereaved. The whole world is poor because of his loss. But we can all be better Americans because John Fitzgerald Kennedy has passed our way. It was the first time that it had been heard by so many people. There were millions listening and watching the funeral on television and, and radio. And the call is remembered not only for being a beautiful call and, and heard for the first time by a worldwide audience, but it's also known for the slight chip or mistake that Clark made on the sixth note. Even though there was a slight mistake, it still touched the emotions of many Americans who heard the call. As one person put it, Clark sobbed for the nation with his bugle call. A lot of folks thought that he had missed the, the note on purpose, when in reality, he had been standing out there for a long period of time, and it was very, very cold. Even though it was a mistake, it is remembered for being such a poignant ending to a, a weekend of sorrow and grief for a nation. The call has been sounded many, many times. It sounded 30 times every single day at Arlington National Cemetery. And most people would never remember the bugler's name except for that one slight mistake. I can tell you in some of the times that I have played taps, um, you know, when you begin to play that song, you can see people in the crowd wiping tears from their eyes, which makes it even more difficult to play because you can see that happening. So while you feel the responsibility of playing it, the, the prayer that I always prayed was, you know, God, make sure I hit all the notes and hit them right because this is important. I don't know how many people after many of the ceremonies that I played taps in, would approach me and speak to me and tell me how meaningful the playing of taps was to them, uh, more so than anything else that occurred in the ceremony. In our instances in police work, uh, it brings closure to a life that meant so much to all of us uh, and that was sacrificed for the good of all. It's very easy as a professional musician playing taps at funerals to become emotionally involved with each and every funeral that we perform at. Unfortunately, if you do that and become too involved, you won't last more than a, a month uh, before it becomes overwhelming. So as a professional musician, sometimes we stand back a little bit from the funeral, wanting to make sure that we play the call perfectly, but not trying to get too involved. Playing taps is never about the bugler. It's about the person being honored. And what I want when people hear taps is for them to think of that person being honored. It's a tribute to them is really what it is. The millions of men and women who have served our country in uniform certainly deserve the honor of having taps performed at their funeral when they pass. So I think this is a tradition that's going to continue for generations and generations. It may change slightly uh, in that it may go to more of a recorded version, but certainly the sound and the respect of that will be always present. And of course, personally speaking, I hope that it will always be performed by a live musician because there's nothing like having the bugle call of taps sounded by a live person because the music not only comes out of the instrument, it comes from the heart of the musician. Before I play, I always look down about 20 feet in front of me and I get in my zone and I really try to focus on what I have to do at that moment and really focus on each note and each small phrase and trying to convey the emotion of, of that melody at that time. For those musicians who play this instrument, it becomes uh, a quest to make sure that the, the call is played with the utmost perfection and utmost respect. 
The custom of sounding taps at military funerals wasn't made official until 1891, when it finally found its way into Army regulations. Like the call of taps itself, Arlington National Cemetery is a product of the Civil War, and it's there that the Army Band still maintains the tradition of using bugles. The reason why our unit specifically uses bugles still, and we're one of the few military units that, that issues um, bugles, and the only unit that uses bugles on a regular basis. And it's an honoring of that heritage that the bugle has played in our military, but also militaries around the world. And so we feel like it's important that every, every time a mission is played, either at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier or for simple honors, that there's a bugle involved. Um, even though we have trumpets and we can have other instruments that can play the melody, we feel like the visualization of having the bugle is a really important aspect of, of keeping along with that tradition. Tradition is such an important part of, of our everyday life here in the United States, and the performance of taps certainly falls in that. It's a very solemn act done by a person in recognizing someone's service to our country. And there are slight variations on how the call is performed. Each performer can perform it in a slightly different way. Sometimes performers play it a little faster, some play it slower. There's an echo version of taps that's sometimes performed. And even though it's a very simple melody, 24 notes in length and only using four of the bugle notes, it can be a very difficult call to play. There are two sacred spots for me for sounding the call of taps. One of them is at Arlington National Cemetery on the plaza of the Tomb of the Unknowns. It is the most sacred spot in the military. The, the second place, and more close to home to me, is performing the call here at Berkeley Plantation in the area where the call was born, where it was originated. To know that General Daniel Butterfield was standing on this spot, Oliver Wilcox Norton was here with his bugle sounding that call for the first time. To know that on that July evening, the call was heard here, and then 150 some years later, it's still being performed. Those wistful strains that Oliver Wilcox Norton himself described as being melancholy, yet full of rest and peace, have long been associated with a variety of civic and fraternal organizations which have perpetuated its use as both a functional and ceremonial call. The symbolism and emotional weight carried on its 24 notes aren't the exclusive domain of any particular group. Along with a military-style chain of command, TAPS has also found a special place in the culture of law enforcement. I think the parallels between the military and uh, law enforcement uh, are generally made because we are a uniformed service. And while we're not military organizations, there are quasi-military elements of what we do. And when someone makes the ultimate sacrifice, uh, there is a desire on our part to give them what we call military honors. And so that element of it, I think, over time uh, made its way into law enforcement uh, because there were so many people within the law enforcement community uh, that had a military background. And it's a tradition that I think um, is rightfully placed uh, and I think is very well done and it has a place in law enforcement for certain. Within this area, um, in this region, I, I, don't, I think Ken Rico may have been one of the first police agencies to have an official bugler. Uh, and that was a role that uh, Chief Shepard had asked me to assume. And I continued to play taps at a host of different events right up until the time I became a member of a command staff. So we reached out to the division and lo and behold, we had quite a few folks who could play the bugle. And uh, even today, whenever we have taps played, uh, it's played by one of our uniformed police officers. But Carrying on the tradition of her uh, bugler for the police division is an honor. It's a true honor. And you see firsthand how effective and how emotional it is during a service. And it is something that families feel, and it's an emotional tie. It's a connection between 
current service members and those who have fallen. And while taps may be um, the tune that means lights are out, that something has concluded, uh, what it also means is that we won't ever forget the life of this person.